All right, so apparently there's something rich people know about 401ks that the rest of us don't, so let's take some notes. So what I tell people is say, does your company have a 401k? Yes. Does it have a match? Yes. Explain the match. Well, if I put in 4%, they match with 4%. Okay, good, I do that. That's 100% rate of return. But above the match, I wouldn't put in my 401k anymore. I would put that in a cash value life insurance because I want to be in control. I want to have tax. All right, he lost me at, instead of 401k, I'd invested into cash value life insurance, which is why today we have to talk about America's most toxic trait, the 401k. You may be surprised when you open your next quarterly 401k statement. Why do it? If you're not <laughs> near, um, you know, this, I, I have not been opening many statements. Now, a 401k is kind of like going to the doctor. You know you should go every once in a while, but if you never do, is there ever anything actually wrong with you in the first place? Millennial pro tip on how to save money on healthcare. So understanding what a 401k is, is one of the most important parts about investing, but it's also something that roughly 66% of Americans don't. But what we do have are a lot of creative guesses for what it might be. Like when I was a kid, I thought a 401k just meant that you had $401,000. And now that I'm older, I know it doesn't mean that. I don't know what it does mean, but I know it doesn't mean that. Maybe a 401k is that you need $401,000 by age 65 or you die. Now, both of those guesses are only slightly wrong. And because most Americans can't explain exactly what a 401k is, most of us don't even know exactly how much money we should have saved in them. And unfortunately, if you try to explain a 401k to me, I will not listen or care. So I don't know why I made this video, but in theory, if you start at age 23 and you max out your 401k every single year and you assume 8% returns in the stock market, you can become a millionaire in about 20 years as early as the age of 45 and a multi-millionaire by the age of 60. So in today's video, I wanna help explain exactly how to cheat at poker so you can do this. Take a deck of cards, flick a card in midair, get it inside the fan, and this will help you fund the 401k because Lord knows we all need the help. And then I'll show you how it works and how much money you should have saved in it by the different ages. And uh, wouldn't you know it, that's the ace of hearts. That's you smashing the like button, totally unplanned. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay. For your poker lesson, I'll be your instructor. You thought I was kidding, but I wasn't. This is how you shuffle the deck with just one hand. You split the deck into two halves, you mix them together and... Bam, just like that. And then later in the video, we'll teach you how to produce the aces so you can have all the tools to fight the Fed's tools because Papa Pal can't win. Those rate increases, am I right? Okay, I'm not gonna show you how to cheat at cards, but I am gonna explain the 401k. The 401k is part of the Internal Tax Revenue Code in Section 401, Subsection K. This is a program that encourages people to invest in their retirement by allowing them to park their money into an account that gives them and the company they work for certain write-offs and tax benefits. The way it works is once you sign up to a 401k through your job, you'll set a specific percent that you'll wanna have taken out from your paycheck automatically to fund your 401k account. Now there's two types of 401ks, the Roth and the traditional. With the traditional 401k, Okay, whatever money you invest inside of that account, you can use to deduct off of your taxable income. Now, both of these accounts have a limit of up to $22,500 per year. So you can invest less than that, but no more than that in 2023. So for example, let's say I was earning $100,000 per year working as Shin Lim's magical assistant at the Mirage Casino for his show Limitless, which I'm not paid to promote or talk about, but I should be. This is how it would happen. I did that for you, Shin. And let's say I contributed 10% of that income into a traditional 401k. That means I would only have to pay taxes on $90,000 worth of income, not the full 100. And also on average, most people put about 13.8% of their incomes into their 401k. Now this tells me that most people are not taking the full advantage of their 401ks because you'd have to make $163,000 per year for 13.8 to equal the full contribution limit of $22,500 because math in reverse is fun. Even if you're not contributing the full amount, you should still prioritize investing inside of the 401k and here's exactly why. Putting money into your 401k does not mean that your money will now automatically start sprouting coins like a Super Mario block. 
just wanted to show that off because the 401k is not the investment. It's not the asset, it's just an account. Now that might be obvious to you, but it was not always obvious to me because you still have to pick exactly what you want to invest in inside of that account. But you should still prioritize it because it is one of the only known accounts in the world where you can make 100% guaranteed returns on your money and that's because of the employer contribution match meaning your employer will contribute up to a certain portion of your salary and whatever you put into it, they'll put into it as well. The average employer match for 2023 is currently between four to 6% of your annual salary. So if you make $100,000 a year and you have a 6% match and you put in $6,000 into your account, your employer will also match that $6,000 and put the same. So please pay yourself first and take advantage of this free money. Now your choices for what you wanna invest in will not be as clear and as straightforward as opening up your favorite brokerage account and picking your favorite stock. Usually your company will offer you a specific mutual fund to pick from and some of the most popular ones are the target retirement date funds. And those are fine, but when I looked at setting up a 401k for my parents, the one that I picked for them was something along the lines of FXAIX. That was Fidelity's mutual fund that tracks the S&P 500. Now, if you don't have access to that one, that's perfectly fine, but what I would strive for is something that has a low expense ratio. That's this little word right here, which should show 0.0 something percent. That's considered a cheap or a low expense ratio fund. I would also try to look at one that looks at the overall broader stock market, like the S&P 500. Now this is not financial advice, this is just what I did for my parents, and it's what I would do for myself, especially if you're on the younger side. So once you have that 401k, you funded the account, and you picked what you wanted to buy inside of it, you can now use it to offset your income, assuming you picked the traditional 401k, and the idea is to continuously do this until 20 to 40 years from now, you can retire as a multimillionaire. Unless, of course, you're a millennial, in which case you should plan for a contingency like another once in a lifetime of a millennial financial crisis, in which case, remember, poker. Now, sometimes your employer will let you choose the Roth 401k, which is the opposite. This is the account that you contribute after tax dollars into. You don't get the income deduction, but whatever the account grows into, you get to withdraw on tax-free. Now, there is an endless debate in the finance space about which one is better, pay taxes now or pay taxes later. And the answer comes down to this. Do you think you'll make more money in retirement or less money? Most people tend to agree that when we retire and we quit our job, we tend to make less money because we quit, so we stop earning as much. And in that case, it's better to have the traditional 401k. But if you believe you'll make more money in retirement, then it's better to have the Roth 401k. Now, the most common advice is to have a traditional 401k with your job and a Roth IRA account, which is the one you manage yourself separately from your job. By the way, based on my countless hours of research browsing these forums over the last 10 years, there is actually the best order of steps when prioritizing these accounts. And it goes like this. First, they say to focus on getting your 401k employer contribution match. Make sure that you get up to the 100%, so get every single dollar you can from your employer. Then go to your Roth IRA and try to max it out, which is $6,500 for the year. Then if you still have money left over, try to max out your 401k. Now that is not an easy thing to do. That is $29,000 for the year, or about $2,416 per month. So if you can't do that, don't stress about it. But if you can do that, then you're using most of the government's tools that they've given us to pay as least amount in taxes as possible. I say most because technically there's still the HSA, which is even better, but that's another story for another time. Anyway, they say that comparison is the thief of all joy and you should never do it. So here's how much everyone has in their 401k by age, so you can compare yourself to everybody else. According to the latest data from Fidelity, the average 401k balance is $103,900. So if you don't have that, what are you even doing with your life? Stop buying those $5 lattes. You don't need to drink that. You can drink sweat equity. If you follow these steps, you can become a multimillionaire tomorrow if you just buy my course and I'll show you how to lower your mortgage monthly payment to $0 by living inside an LLC for free. No, but seriously, data is completely off. Averages do not show off real life data because if Jeff Bezos right now walked into my studio and it was just him and I, the average net worth in this room would be $63 billion. 
And that's how I make the big bucks on YouTube. Statistics. Let me show you the real data and your mind's gonna explode because there's a massive difference between average and median, which is the real average that you and I think about when we think about averages. Check this out. If you're younger than 25, which is about a quarter of the people that watch my channel, the average 401k balance here is a little over $6,000, but the median is only $1,786. The next age bracket is 25 to 34. And if you watch my YouTube videos, you're probably here. Over 36% of people are. The average 401k for this group shows $37,211, but that's the average. The median is only $14,000. So if you have more than that in your 401k, you're doing better than the real average person and you're doing good. Now the next age bracket is 35 to 44. This is about one out of every five people that watch my YouTube videos, and this one is a huge jump to 97,000, but the median is a little over $36,000. Next up is 45 to 54. About 10% of my audience is here, and the average is super high at $180,000, but the true average, the median, is a little over $61,000. Now there's two more age brackets after that, 55 to 64 and 65 and up, only about about 4% of my audience falls here, and there's not a huge difference between the two at about $90,000 in their 401k for the median. So that's how much the real average person actually has. And if I had the personality of Dave Ramsey, I'd be losing my sh right now, and here's exactly why. Roughly 48% of Americans had no retirement savings according to data from 2019, and those who did only had about $160,000. But even at $160,000, which sounds like a lot of money, would only last the average retiree a couple years if they only relied on their 401k. And that's because you should expect to spend anywhere between 55 to 80% of your current income per year in retirement. So if you were comfortable living on $100,000 a year, expect to be spending anywhere between 55 to $80,000 per year once you're older. Now, luckily, there's also Social Security, which about 74% of Americans rely on. Now, the good news is the older we get, studies show that we typically spend less money. And I realize that healthcare costs are way out of control and those are going up. You go to the doctor and you're like, hey doc, I'm sad. And they're like, sad backwards is das and das not good. That'll be $10,000. So yes, healthcare costs are going up but they will be offset by everything else because you'll also spend a lot less on your house because it's most likely going to be paid off and you will have a paid off car. And you're probably not gonna spend as much on vacations and things like restaurants and you'll also have less friends, so you'll also need less money. And if you don't have enough money, try this one trick they don't want you to know, have more money. No, but in all seriousness, here's the blunt truth about how much money you actually need to have in your 401k based on financial models. It's generally advised to have at least one times your annual salary saved up in your 401k by the age of 30, three times by the age of 40, six times by the age of 50, eight times by the age of 60, and by 67, 10 times your annual salary inside of your 401k. So if you are used to making $75,000 a year at 67, you should have roughly $750,000 saved up. Now, needless to say, that is nowhere near enough what most people have today. Now, even though I'm personally very fortunate and in a lucky position, all because of YouTube and because you watch my videos, my parents aren't, and they are nowhere near enough six figures, let alone 750,000. So in a way, I'm their retirement strategy, so I already have dependents, even though I've got no kids. And that's not good. Now, I don't mean to stress you out about all this, and by you, I mean mostly me, but hopefully we still have a couple decades still ahead of us to work and increase our incomes, and we can still lower how much we're spending. But now that you know all this, share it with a friend, help them out with their retirement, because if they don't get to have enough, we can all be sad together, which is way better than being sad alone. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below and then go track them automatically with a spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.